What's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video. Today I'm going to be showing you the difference between a manifold system and a load balancing system and what they do and how they can be beneficial for you in your playthrough. That's because recently I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys in the Let's Play series going, bitch you keep talking about a manifold, you keep talking about a load balancing and how can they be beneficial to us in our factory and can you show us how to do it? But people have been getting confused because I'm putting four smelters down, I've got four splitters uh, being split into each of the inputs, and then people are going, aren't, if you're sending 120 down that belt, aren't 60 going to go into the first one, 60 go down the line, and then 30 go into the next one, and then 30 go into that one, then 15, then 15, then 7.5, then 7.5? Yes, but no. So let me show you what a manifold system is first, and hopefully I can make this as easy and simple as possible for you. So this right here is a manifold system. As we can see, I've got four smelters and four splitters dividing off four individual Mark 1 belts. That is being fed by a Mark 2 spine or a highway belt, what some people call it. So what is this doing? The highway belt is, think of it as a highway in IRL, right? You're going to be sending a lot of traffic down there, and these splitters are your junctions these are going to be turning off going onto your side streets so for me as a player as i as we know the um smelter is all is making iron ingots and that requires 30 iron ore per minute and because that equals 30 iron ore it only needs a mark one belt going into it and yes you can put it your fastest belt layer as well but it's not going to speed up the production of your manifold system. The reason I do this is just because at a visual glance, when I'm going around my factory and I see an input, which is a Mark 1 belt, I know that that recipe that's inside that machine is taking uh, less than 60 items per minute. It's just a personal preference for me, and that's how I like it. You can put whatever belt you want in there, uh, but for me, I like to do it that way. So the first thing you're probably noticing is this belt is full compared to these three. And that is because this splitter is sending 60 down this belt and it's sending 60 down this belt. So then this is where people are getting confused because they're wondering like, isn't this machine just going to constantly keep taking 60? No, that's because it requires 30 iron ore per minute. Uh, and this will actually eventually get to 100 and fill the machine. Once the machine fills, you can see the iron ore is now starting to stutter going into the machine because it's trying to feed the uh, smelter 60 items where the machine only needs 30, which means on this belt right here, 90 iron ore is being sent now and then this splitter is going to send 45 that way and 45 that way meaning that this now is being overfed because it's receiving 45 iron ore per minute and it's only needing 30 so when that machine fills up it will start to stutter as well because it's being overfed meaning that this next section will actually receive 60 per minute that means 30 is going to go down there and 30 is going to go down there technically you don't need this one right here like this you could literally just put a mark one belt going from there into your machine the only reason i do that is for later is you can ex you can expand uh, on this design so we can see the like how the main function of a manifold system works and as you guessed it the last two machines will get 30 or per minute meaning that um it's going to be 100 efficient and we can see that visually by just looking at the belt we know that these are 60 they have an equal space for one more ore to go in between that and that is now sending 30 ore per minute down each of these lines so the next question people ask is how do you upgrade this system so the main purpose of a manifold system is easier to build but it's very easy to upgrade and all you need to do is make sure you prioritize the um the amount of items that can go onto your spine or highway belt so as we know this is a 120 belt because uh, it's a mark 2 and that's how much it carries if we upgrade to a mark 3 it'll go to 270 meaning 270 will come down this line depending on the items you're putting onto it so you will want to upgrade your miner so for example in this guide the storage container is replicating a miner for us so it's bringing out 120 items per minute so if we upgrade this to a mark um mark three we're going to put this like this and we're going to upgrade this one and this one and this one right but what we want to do now is we're sending a lot more items than these smelters can take so we're going to have a backlog so if you go into here and if you do 270 divided by 30 because that's what a smelter is required 30 iron ore per minute we're going to need nine so as you can see i've set up nine smelters with nine splitters and 
wherever the items are going. This could be going to storage. This could go into some constructors to make your plates, your rods, or whatever item you're going to make. So as we know, we just need to get this belt and upgrade all of these belts like so. That now, your spine is sending down 270 items, and all of this will eventually fill up. It takes some time to heat up, and when I mean heat up, it's just all of these to fill up. And then, as you guessed it, your last two machines will do the same and receive the amount. And that's how simple it is. And when we upgrade to a Mark IV, we're going to do 480. So if we go into here, 480 divided by 30 is 16. We can just double this, so we can go... 16 smelters in a line this time or if you wanted to you can overclock all of these smelters to do um 200 percent um which will then double the production which then will mean that's going to need 60 60 60 and 60. that's if you wanted to keep a small footprint inside your factory and not use an incredible amount of space if you're going to be doing 16 smelters and that is what a basic manifold is it's a very simple setup and it works extremely well and is easy for new players and even experienced players, especially when it comes to later on when you start working with decimal places, you start working with uneven numbers and it's a bit easier for yourself. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how to load balance and load balancing is basically the terminology within Satisfactory when all of your machines are receiving the items at the exact same time. So as we know with a manifold system, the smelters get full one by one. Where this system right here is what is load balanced. And how it's load balanced is, as we know, the four smelters are going to require 30 ore per minute. We have a 120 belt coming down here. It's then going to go into this splitter. This is then going to send 60 down this belt and 60 down this belt. And then it's going to come to this splitter where 30 is going to get sent there. 30 is going to get sent down there. And as you guessed it, yeah, it's the same on this side. So this is a load balance system. The only problem with this is that it's very difficult and a, a bit more manageable when you want to um, upgrade later on. It's a lot more work. So here we go. As you can see, the 120 ore is coming in. It's being diverted on each side into 60. And then it'll go into the next uh, splitters and then merge in 30 into each direction. So that is what a load balance system is. Most players do this at the very start of the game. It looks visually stunning. And the only problem is, is when you get later on, it's very hard to expand because try and do load balance like 42.5 or 42.31 or all that kind of stuff. That's when you're going to be doing a lot of underclocking and overclocking. So let's do the same scenario that we did with the manifold line. What happens if we've got to upgrade this to a Mark III line and I want to load balance this. So look at the difference between this compared to the manifold. So as we can see, this whole setup's a little bit different. You have to remove stuff, bring new stuff in, and all this kind of stuff. Whereas a manifold line, only thing you need to do is just put more smelters in a line, more splitters in a line, and connect the belts. With this one, as you can tell, we've removed the splitter that was here that was going into these two we've had to add more in more belts more resources and all that kind of stuff but now you must be wondering you you're using eight smelters where before in the manifold system you used nine well this is where load balancing can start getting confusing because later on in game you're going to start working and trying to send 15 this way 15 this way and then merge them to 15 to make you know I, I, you can kind of get it right so, as we know, we have a Mark III line here, which is sending 270 items. Which is then going into a 120 line this way and a 120 line that way. That 120 is then being split into 60 going along here and 60 going along there. And then this one is splitting 30 and 30. So, all of these are 100%. The only thing that is not 100% on this line, and yeah, you probably already guessed it, is the minor. That's because 270 is going down here, but it's being split into 120 and 120. So in a load balance system, how would you fix this? So where to fix this backlog right here is you've got a couple of solutions. One, you could just reduce um, your miner to only provide 240 per minute instead of 230. I can't really show this right now because I'm using a, a storage. But for example, if you're using a, a Mark II miner or using a Mark I miner on a pure node, overclocked to 240 
it will then send 240 along this Mark III belt. So you will see gaps on this belt. It will then split evenly and go to eight smelters. The other option you could do if you wanted to is you could remove this corner right here or however you've got it designed in your base. You can then grab a yourself a smart splitter. You can put this here. You could then make sure that you've got a Mark III belt here because it's going to send, you know, the items that way. Connect that up to there. But then we're going to put down a Mark I here. And inside this smart splitter, we're going to make sure that on the on the left hand side is we're going to send iron ore. And then on the center output, we're going to do overflow. So now, as you can see what's happened, we've just created our own little junction, right? We have got 102, well, sorry, we've got 240 uh, iron going down this line. And then it's going down here. And then eventually, this will start backing up and then start spitting out 30 ore onto this line. And is it starting to happen now? Just like that. Which then means, if you wanted to, this line could go into a smelter. Depends on how you would like your build to be set up. But I could just put that into there. I could put a Mark 1 belt, connect that up, give it power, give it the recipe. And then, as you can see, it will then start filling up. And it will start spitting out ingots. And then that is now going to be 30 ingots per minute. And we can assess that by just jumping into here. And notice that this number is going to bounce between 4 and 5. So 4, 5, 4, 5, and so on. So as you can see with load balancing, this can easily be done by spending more time. I didn't want to spend too much time on quickly configuring all of this. Um, but as you can see, that's how load balancing systems works. You're going to be utilizing overflows. You're going to be utilizing power shards. You're going to be overclocking and underclocking all this kind of stuff. And when it gets to larger numbers and you start having to um, split a 60 line. So for example, if you wanted... Um, 30 to go one way but then you wanted you know 80 to go to another uh, and all that kind of stuff so for example if you wanted like um 30 to go one route and then you wanted 90 to go down the other what you're gonna have to do you have to create two split lines and then merge them two together and all that kind of stuff so other form of load balancing is this kind of system right here as well Later on in the game, you're going to start needing to send 60 items to one place, 30 t items to the other, and 30 items to the other. And if you bring in that all on one belt, you can see what we've done here is we have 120 belt coming in. That's being split into 60. Then it's going into another splitter where 30 is being sent that way, 30 is being sent that way. And on this side, it's exactly the same. So 30 is going around here and 30 is going that way. That means we've got two 30 lines, one on that side and one on this side. And then these two 30 lines are merging in together, which will then 30 plus 30 is a 60. And then that's how you've got to kind of start looking at some stuff later on in game when you're starting needing some machines need require 60, some requires 30, but you want to maximize the single ore that you're using. So it can start getting confusing and it can start messing your brain up. Trust me, I know I've done a load balance playthrough and oh boy, it's brain melting. But I highly recommend doing this whenever you feel like it if you feel comfortable doing it this way do this way if not do a manifold way um but you could also do this as a challenge if you think you've completed the game and you you want to you don't feel like you can get more out of the game try doing a full playthrough of load balancing and then come back to me and tell me how you enjoyed it because i could tell you what you're probably at some point in that save through well that playthrough you uh, you spent about six hours working on some form of system like this trying to rebalance everything so hopefully this explained the manifold system and the load balancing system they are two totally separate things and hopefully now you can understand what i mean when i mention either of them in the let's play but also just as a simple guide for you to try and figure out if you want to do one or the other in your playthrough so guys thank you so much for watching and check out my other content right here you've got some playlists you've got my second channel if you want to watch uh, my behind the scenes and how i make the episodes you can see how my brain works and all that kind of stuff working on each of these you know series episodes so guys thank you so much for watching and uh i'll see you in another video uh keep smiling and i'll uh see you then